South Africa's mining minister says government is leaving no stone unturned in providing a stable environment for investors. Opening the annual mining in Dabe in Cape Town today, Guaco Ramatlodi said he wanted to emphasize his intention to provide regulatory certainty. He also said that in the face of declining investment from some of the major players, government was committed to expanding its role in the mining industry. Now, mining houses have expressed concern about a clause in the new mineral and petroleum resources development bill that gives government a 20% stake in new ventures and the ability to buy further stakes. The bill has been sent back to Parliament and Ramatlodi said the process was happening with speed. He says he is fully aware of the restructuring plans of some of the major players in the industry. Since last year's five-month long strike, some miners such as Anglo-American Platinum have announced plans to sell some of their local mines. The minister says government will not bury its head in the sand and it plans to establish a new South African mining company that's a national champion. He's also told delegates that government is committed to sustainable energy and labor solutions amid difficulties at ESCOM and after last year's unprecedented strike. Anyone feeling so changed or aggrieved is free to approach our courts, including the Constitutional Court. I think this provides the biggest policy security for any investor. I cannot give you any better clarity on this policy issue because our policies are justiciable. I trust that it is as clear as the blue skies of South Africa. By the way, you'll be hard pressed to find a similar legal regime anywhere in the world. We will hear from the minister live at the Indaba shortly. The Chamber of Mines has welcomed his efforts to address issues facing the industry. It says energy and policy changes have so far dominated concerns from foreign investors at the mining Indaba. Well, the most important thing is the energy discussion. That is big. The energy discussion, we need to ensure that we, 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 so we get our house in order when it comes to energy, specifically with ESCOM, and we need to help ESCOM. The second one is the MPRDA bill. Well, the amendment bill being recalled by President Zuma, a lot of people are asking questions, what next? And we need to shape the future of that regulation. We need to shape the future of the mining industry together. Well, the SABC's Numpumalelo Sizibe is standing by with the minister at the mining in Daba at the Cape Town Convention Centre. Numpu, it's over to you. Thanks very much, Francis. Yes, well, I'm joined by the Minister of Mineral Resources, Nwaku Ramathlodi. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Okay, now, now, Minister, the MPRDA, the minerals, the minerals legislation that um, President Zuma has sent back to Parliament. Now, once uh, members get back to the House and get beyond the point of orders, how quickly do you hope that they'll resolve this particular piece of legislation? Well, um, we are hoping that because it's uh, a beaten path, it has been there before, um, that might make it uh, easier to process and uh, therefore maybe be, do it within record time, but within the legal prescripts that are required for legislation to be legally uh, compliant with the Constitution. Now, you spoke about um, testing the constitutionality of the, of the legislation. Are you talking about doing that after the parliamentary process? When are you talking about doing that? I'm seeking advice on that and counsel. Um, it might be better that we do the thing up front so that um, there's no comeback. Um, and because you know we don't control the constitutional uh, court's programs. So perhaps if we put the thing in on time and simultaneously run the programs uh, in parliament, we might be advised on time before we finish um, with the processing. Now, Minister, one of the issues that is of real concern is obviously the electricity constraint problem we have in the country. We know that these problems cannot be solved overnight, but what is it that government can help, um, it can help to do in the interim to help industry obviously contribute to growth? The first thing to do is to assist ESCOM to come out of the current crisis. And uh, we have uh, passed a cabinet resolution to that end to get money give it to ESCON, bail them out, um, reorganize management, the board, 
the minister responsible is attending to that. We have put together um, a war room um, composed of the ministries of uh, economic development so that we manage the energy issue tightly on an ongoing and daily basis. So that is in hand. Um, we are allowing uh, independent generators of power to, to come onto the grid. For instance, um, uh, your solar power, your wind power turbines that are happening, we are allowed them to do that. We are again processing the applications of um, independent coal producers to, to, to begin to build own power stations. Then. And we're hoping as they do so, they can also use that power to share with their communities in the areas where they're located. Now, you talked about a national champion. We've heard in the past about a state-owned mining company. Uh, this, this national champion that you're talking about, what format would it take? Would it be part public, part private? When do you see it actually up and running? And what would it, its purpose be? The state mining company exists. It's got its board, it's got its uh, management, and we are giving it more assets to develop. It is develop, it's supplying coal to ESCOM, for instance, as we speak. So that exists, state mining company. The national champion is separate from the state mining company because it's a privately driven um, initiative, which I'm hoping will enable black people for the first time to participate in the bigger scheme of things with respect to the industry that I currently I'm responsible for. And um, we are looking at uh, the principles which I'm discussing with uh, the companies, big ones, multinationals, as they uh, leave some assets in South Africa. I'm trying to direct them as to how to dispose of those in a way, in a manner that will support the creation of a black owned state national mine company. Minister, apparently there are some um, uh, reporting houses suggesting that you said that you want to cut down on labor unions. Can you give us clarity on that? How do you cut down on labor unions? That will be unconstitutional. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it doesn't arise at all. And then the last thing from me, Minister, at the AU level, what um, discussions are being had about curbing the flight of illicit um, capital flows out of the continent? We know it's something to the tune of about $50 billion per annum. What's being done to curb that? Former President Becky would be best suited to answer that question because he is dealing with, with that um, phenomenon in his other capacity. And um, I think the idea is that there is an initiative that the Union, African Union has sanctioned and, and it is operating under the former President Becky. We will hope we can get feedbacks from them on the work that they are doing. Thank you for your time, Minister. That was uh, Mwaku Ramathodi, the Minister of Mineral Resources. It's back to you, Francis, in studio.